Hey, it's Sherry. I'm so glad you're here today because I have 12 great DIY home decor projects that I can't wait to show you. They look like something that you might purchase at a pricey store when in fact they all cost me under $5 to make. Some of them were even free. So if that sounds good to you, Let's get started! If you saw my recent thrift haul video, then you'll recognize this little pressed wood box that I picked up at the Habitat Restore. I decided to change it up by covering it with wood scraps from my garage. Some of the scraps were already the height that I needed. Other pieces I cut down with my miter saw. I just played around with the arrangement of the scraps to fit the width of the box. I wasn't sure if you'd be able to see the box between the wood, so to be safe, I gave it a coat of dark brown chalk paint. To attach the wood, I first hot glued the strips to the box, and when I was happy with the arrangement, I added one nail in the middle of each wood strip. Then I tied some jute rope around the box, concealing the nails. To fill the box, I painted a couple of plastic gourds that I had picked up at Goodwill for a dollar. I stuck a wood skewer in each of the gourds to make them easier to paint and faster to dry. I filled the box with a large square of packing styrofoam, and then I stuck in the gourds with the skewers still attached. I pulled out some fake florals in muted colors that I thought would go well with the gourds. I put some tall stems in the back and some droopy stems in the front, and then I filled in the holes with some green leaf branches. When I was happy with the arrangement, I filled in any remaining holes with Spanish moss. The droopy plant was something I had picked up at Dollar Tree. But the other fake florals were all leftover scraps from other projects. So this entire arrangement, including the cost of the box, was under $5. Have you noticed that taper candles are everywhere these days? So I decided to make a candle stand for five taper candles out of a large piece of driftwood that was taking up space in my garage. I found the center and then marked out five evenly spaced spots. I drilled a hole in each spot using a one inch spade drill bit. If you don't have access to driftwood, you could really drill holes in just any old piece of wood. To update some old candles that I had, I melted down a thrifted pillar candle, adding one orange and one brown crayon to the wax to give it a caramely color. I then dipped each of the taper candles into the colored wax, lifting them out and letting the wax dry for a second or two, and then re-dipping them two or three times. I also dipped the base of the candle in the wax so that the candle would stand up straight in the drilled hole. I had plenty of colored wax, so I dipped a second set of candles because it was a good way to hide the stains on these old candles. The candle stand looked a bit plain for my taste, and so I cut up a fake bittersweet stem and arranged it around the candles. The only thing that I bought for this project was the bittersweet stem, which was 50% off, so it cost me less than $4. Even if you have to buy new taper candles, you can buy a package of two for a dollar at Dollar Tree. I was trying to use up the remaining items from my latest thrift haul, and I still had this rusty shovel. So I used an old bracket to attach it to a scrap piece of wood. I wanted to do something a little unexpected, and so I tied some twine around the top of a small glass bottle, and then I tied the twine around the bracket. Then I cut some pieces off of that same bittersweet branch and stuck it in the bottle. 
It was still looking a little plain to me, and so I tied a bow and a metal label holder to the top of the shovel. Then I printed out a small vintage label which I adhered to the bottle with Mod Podge. Finally, I attached a D-ring to the back for hanging purposes, and I was done. Once again, I used things that I already had on hand. The shovel I purchased at Habitat Restore with a cartload of other things for a total of $30, so the shovel maybe cost me $1. Even if you had to buy a couple things, you should be able to make this for under $5. In a previous video, I showed you how to make a faux standing scale, which I'll link in the description box below. Since this is very similar, I'll go through the steps rather quickly. Disassemble an old alarm clock and set the parts aside. Print out a scale face in a size that will fit your clock face, and then attach it using glue stick. Spray paint the body of your clock in whatever color you like. I used black spray paint. Reassemble your clock. You may need to use super glue to reattach the back to the body of the clock. Drill a small hole in the top and bottom of your clock and then add hooks. I used one eye hook and one cup hook because that's what I had on hand. I used a couple drops of super glue just to make sure that the hooks stayed put. Spray paint a stove burner cover, a metal lid, or a cake pan to match your clock and drill three holes along the edge equidistance apart. Attach a plant hanging chain from Dollar Tree to the holes and to the bottom hook of your clock. You can easily remove links from your chain if you think it's too long. Hanging scales can sell for over $300, but my faux scale was way cheaper. I used a metal lid and spray paint that I had on hand, so I only spent $1 for the hanging chain and $2.99 for the alarm clock. I love vintage ephemera, and wanted to create a unique way to display postcards. I had a metal stand in my stash that had once held a glass bowl. I super glued it to a wood round. Because I'm out of accelerator, I also used hot glue to hold it in place until the super glue could dry. Then I super glued three small clothespins around the edge of the wood round equidistance apart. Then I printed out three images of vintage postcards, which I clipped to the stand. But you could clip on photos, Christmas cards, birthday cards, whatever you like. If you don't have a metal stand like this, you could use a candlestick just the same. This project didn't cost me anything to make, but even if you had to buy most of the supplies, it shouldn't cost you more than $5. Here is another project that was absolutely free for me to make. I gathered up a bunch of sticks from my yard. I cut off all of the small branches and then cut each stick to the length of my ruler, which was about 12 and a half inches long. I cut two long strips of brown ribbon, which I taped to my floor, making sure that the pieces of ribbon were exactly 11 inches apart. Then I began hot gluing the ends of each stick to the ribbon. It was really quite simple. The only trick is to find as many straight sticks as possible. I was only able to use about half of all the sticks that I cut because so many of them were just too crooked. When you run out of sticks, cut off any extra ribbon at the ends and you're done. I always use Gorilla Hot Glue, and those sticks were really firmly attached to the ribbon. I was going to use it as a table runner on my dining room table, but I didn't have quite enough sticks to make it long enough. 
but I love the texture that it adds to this ottoman. Because I had a lot of wax left after I made the dipped candles, I decided to make a poured candle. I poured some wax into a cleaned out jelly jar. I reused the wick from the candle I had melted down and stuck it through a slit that I cut in a straw to keep it propped up in the jar until the wax solidified. To cover the jar, I purchased this colorful scarf at Dollar Tree. I cut off the fringe and folded the edges in and then wrapped the scarf around the jar using hot glue to hold it in place. I cut a strip along the edge of the remaining part of the scarf to create a ribbon of sorts, which I tied around the top of the jar. Then I hot glued some buttons to the back so it would look cute from all sides. To cover a second candle, I cut the sleeve off of an old sweater. I just slid the candle into the sleeve and then tucked the ends in and used a little hot glue to hold the ends in place. I hot glued a leaf from my yard to the sweater, and then I just wrapped some twine around the candle and the leaf. The first candle cost $2, $1 for the Dollar Tree scarf, and $1 for the Goodwill candle. The second candle cost $1 because it was purchased at Dollar Tree. Here is another completely free project, unless you factor in the cost of a couple pieces of cardstock paper. Collect a variety of leaves from your yard or your neighborhood. Using a dry iron, press them for about 10 minutes between two pieces of paper towel. Cut up a couple pieces of cardstock into triangles or flag shapes and then hot glue one leaf to each of the pieces of cardstock. Print out and glue on labels for each of the leaf types if you like. Then print on cardstock some of your favorite autumn themed poems. Cut the printed poems into the same flag shape. Cut a long piece of twine or rope and then fold the top of each piece of cardstock over the twine and hot glue it in place. I used a scrap piece of paper to make sure that I spaced each piece of cardstock evenly on my twine. For a little added interest, I tied some acorns onto the twine in between the pieces of cardstock. I understand if you think this banner is a little juvenile. In fact, I think it would make a great project for grade school children. However, I love its simple, rustic look. I hung it over my fireplace screen, and I think it looks great with my other autumn decor. Here is another free project using wood scraps from my garage. I selected three different colors of wood from my wood pile, and then I printed out three clip art images of pumpkins that were different sizes and shapes. I placed one pumpkin image on each piece of wood and traced around it. I cut one of the images in half to stretch it out and make it taller. I cut the pumpkin shapes out with my jigsaw and sanded the edges a bit with my orbital sander. Once I figured out how I wanted the three pumpkins to be arranged, I used both hot glue and super glue to attach the three together. Because I had intentionally selected thin pieces of wood for my pumpkins, I needed to glue on an extra strip of wood on the back so that they would stand up on their own. I thought it looked a little plain, so I decided to add some words to the front pumpkin. I created a vinyl stencil using my Cricut machine. Then I pounced on two light coats of dark brown acrylic paint. 
I removed the stencil when the second coat of paint was nearly dry. There was a little bit of bleed through, but because I had painted on raw wood, I was able to use my X-Acto knife and just scrape off the little extra bits. If you don't have a Cricut machine, you can buy a lot of nice pre-made stencils. In fact, Dollar Tree sells quite a few. If you are ready to start working on Christmas decor, you could adapt this project by cutting out three different Christmas tree shapes. You may recognize this flannel shirt because I've used it in several projects this fall, but I still had the large back piece and decided to turn it into a simple pillow. I started by cutting out two large rectangles of the flannel fabric, and then I cut a small square of black felt from a Dollar Tree scarf. I used a little fabric glue in the center of the felt to attach it to one of the pieces of flannel. I printed out four copies of this campfire clip art image to use as a pattern. I cut some small strips of brown felt to use for the logs. I pinned the image of the flames to some orange and yellow felt that I had, and then I cut around them. When I had everything cut out and arranged, then I used the fabric glue to attach everything to the black piece of felt. I put the right sides of fabric together and stitched up the four sides on my sewing machine, leaving a hole open on one of the sides just large enough for my hand to fit through. Before stuffing the pillow, I used a simple whip stitch around the edges of the felt to give it a more finished look. This is why I didn't use a fabric glue along the edges of the felt. However, if you want to skip this step, you'll want to make sure that you use fabric glue on the edges too. Then you're ready to fill your pillow. I used stuffing from an old bed pillow. Sew or glue your opening closed and you're done. I made this pillow with leftovers from other projects, but even if you had to buy felt squares at Walmart for 28 cents each and a flannel shirt at Goodwill, you should be able to make this for under $5. I have an oak tree in my yard, which means that this time of year, my yard is full of acorns. So I wanted to use them in a project. To start, I printed out a pretty vintage label and applied it to a recycled glass bottle using Mod Podge. Initially, I spray painted a bunch of acorns with some gold spray paint and then hot glued them to some branches from my yard. The branches looked pretty plain, so I cut the olives off of some olive branches from Walmart and stuck those in the vase. I still wasn't loving it, so I decided to try something different. I popped the nuts out of their caps, and then I cut little triangles from some old tablecloth fabric. I applied Gorilla Glue Stick to the back of the fabric and then covered each acorn with three or four small pieces of fabric, cutting off any extra bits. When I ran out of Gorilla Glue Stick, I used another brand and the fabric didn't stick nearly as well to the acorns. Once the acorns were covered with fabric, I hot glued them back in their caps. I stitched up a skinny strip of the tablecloth fabric to create a ribbon, which I tied around the top of the bottle. I also hot glued on a couple leaves from my yard. This was another nearly free project for me. The only expense was the olive branches from Walmart. They cost $3, and I still have a branch or two left that I didn't use. I wish I had used red and green plaid fabric so I could have left these out for Christmas. For the last project, you'll need a couple of those large wood maple leaves from Dollar Tree. 
to start, use it as a pattern and trace around it on some inexpensive plain cotton fabric. Cut out the leaf shape and then pin it to the back side of a large piece of old sweater fabric. Sew the two pieces together, stitching in about a half an inch from the edge of the leaf shape. Trim off the excess sweater fabric, cutting as close to the stitches as possible, but do not cut through the cotton fabric. Paint your wood leaf in a coordinating color of chalk paint. When the paint is dry, hot glue the sweater leaf to the wood leaf. I made a second leaf in coordinating sweater fabric. Then I took some small pieces of the sweater fabric and wrapped them around the nut part of an acorn and hot glued them in place. This actually went much faster than covering the acorns with fabric. Once the acorn was covered and the excess sweater was cut off, I hot glued the nut portion back into the cap. Then I hot glued a small strand of twine around the top of the cap so that I could tie the acorns onto the leaves. I realize these are maple leaves, but unfortunately my Dollar Tree does not carry oak leaves. I think these make a cute autumn decor item. And because I used two old sweaters of mine, they only cost a dollar a piece. And now I have an excuse to go buy a couple new sweaters. As some of you know, I sell many of the projects that I make at a local retail store. But sometimes I keep things for myself. And in a couple seconds, I'll show you what I'm keeping this week. And I think this time you're really going to be surprised. So please let me know what you would have kept. Well, that's all for today. Until next Tuesday. Bye-bye for now.